Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week, we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Jan Kirsch is a sculptor and landscape designer from Bosman, Maryland in Talbot County. She creates large, voluptuous fruits and vegetables that have a great sense of sensual whimsy. Like many artists we've introduced you to, Jan's love of art began early and considers her education in art ongoing. I went to the Corcoran for a short time when I lived in D.C. I studied a little in um, Tallahassee, Florida when a former spouse was in law school there. Um, I'm, I'm quite self-taught, but you know, but on the other hand, the, you know, the design courses and the photography, and I, I dipped into, a, you know, a few university situations, so I, you know, I was educating myself and I was also doing life simultaneously. So I think it was, you know, it was a combination of both. Jan has had a long career in landscape design, which became the starting point for the sculpture she is doing now. I think my all of the years that I have been a garden designer, I have been cogitating and, and just observing nature and the forms that in nature. Um, plant forms, shapes of leaves, you know, just wild things. Um, even if it's a bark pattern, I think I'm influenced so much by my landscape work and just simply from being outside a lot. Designing hardscapes, patios, pools, and walkways especially helped her develop a thought process for designing in three dimensions. I've been doing garden design for a long time, so all of those shapes and forms that cross my drawing board, I think were, they're just in my head. So it's, it's this nice, you know, sort of um, nurture for my art to have, you know, forms constantly in my work. And, and I love fruits and vegetables. You know, as a vegetable grower, I just, oh my gosh, the shapes are so fabulous. You know, I just, I love the forms. Now both landscape design and sculpture complement each other. A form like the fig, for instance, would start out in clay. I work it and work it and work it, and I usually have at least three pieces going simultaneously because I'm such a detail-oriented person. Um, it's hard to just focus, you know, forever. Like, for instance, the, you know, the, the detailing in the fig is so minute. And the new uh, persimmon is the same, or the new pomegranate rather, is the same. There, there's so many little details and seeds that I, I like to use the carrots as a refresher, for instance. <laughs> the piece starts out in oil-based clay. I take it as far as I can in clay, and then I have a mold made, and I do a one-off casting in plaster. So there's another piece that looks exactly like this. It's plaster, and because plaster has a different quality and different character, I can use a whole different set of tools. Instead of clay tools, it's rasps and files and um, just like fine-tuning the form exactly as I want it, making the surface just as perfect as I can. Then I have the plaster form scanned and a 3D model is created. So I'm, I'm sculpting, you know, sort of with one foot in the 16th century using oil-based clay just like the old masters did. Um, but then I turn to the 21st century strongly and take advantage of all the new technology. And it gives me the option to make the pieces in any size in a handful of different materials. That, I mean, here's a prime example. This little onion was made using uh, 3D printing. But the original onion, it's sitting on the shelf over there, is about eight or 10 inches long. That's what the, this pair is another example. This is the same pair that is sitting outside at the Bartlett Pear Inn in Easton, that fabulous restaurant. I'm redoing their garden for them, in fact. We're working on it now. Some of Jan's works are produced in stone, some in bronze. Some are made with fiberglass and gel coat. Others are cast resin painted with automobile body paint, giving them a durable, lustrous finish. All her pieces can live outdoors. 
She chooses the materials and finishes based on a patron's needs and aesthetics. About half of her sculptures are for commissions and half are simply to fulfill something she's inspired to explore. She feels one leads the other. Jan has only been pursuing sculpture this intentionally since 2004, with her work making a New York debut in 2009 at the prestigious Architectural Digest show. The leap from individual handcrafted works of art to production fine art sculpture was born from her approach to gardening. You know, I was like loving the concept of seeing multiples of my work. I think the same way that I use plants in the garden, I do sweeps of a stilby or a sweep of, um, what's another one of my favorite, the Asian ginger. Not just one, not just three, you know, but 19 of something or 37 of something. It's like that's where the impact lay. So I wanted to be able to have a series of asparagus or a series of pears in the garden that would complement the plants that I was citing. And, and that's what got me thinking about doing multiples. Jan says that artists need to embrace the lessons learned from failure. Once in the middle of explaining her work during a class critique, Jan's sculpture of an ear of corn fell over and was ruined. I made every single kernel of corn individually. So that was hours and days of work. And it just like slow motion, boom, on the table. I went back to the drawing board or to the work table and I made the piece all over again. And the second time around was better than the first. An early project has had a long life with continued requests to produce more. I, I just personally love asparagus. I think they're a fabulous vegetable. I love the way they just emerge from the ground. It's, you know, it's a great shape, it's great form. And I built that piece in the size that you see, the 45 inch piece that was before I started scanning and modeling. It wasn't done, it was smooth and the, you know, the tip was carved and looked pretty cool and I was happy with it. But I was just like, you know, letting it percolate along and thinking about it. And I, I slept on it and woke up one day and it was one of those early morning brilliant moments you have when you're just awakening. And I was um, convinced that knives and forks just deserved to be on that asparagus. And that's what happened. And it's funny how many people will see it in a garden. I have some sited over in um, near DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C. in a garden. And every once in a while I hear from people, oh, I saw your asparagus, I saw your asparagus. And they, at first, they just see the form and they see the color. And then a minute later they go, oh, look, they're knives and forks. So it's, it's kind of this whimsy. I, it's, it's fun. I, I, and, I, and thank heavens, I, I must dream well. Fun is really important in the garden, and it's really important in art. Jan is represented by galleries in the Chesapeake Bay region of Maryland, Cape Charles, Virginia, Colorado, and New York. For more information about her work, visit Jan's website, jankirschstudio.com. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters eatdrinkbyart.com for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.